Okay, we are live and we're recording. Go ahead, Secretary Curley. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Lindsay Curley, Secretary for the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Just to make sure that everybody is in the right place, this is a webinar to help employers navigate COVID-19 mitigation and response through the holidays and beyond. Just want to cover a couple of housekeeping items with you before we get too far in here. Um, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the ACCD and the Vermont Department of Health websites for review at a later time. This meeting is public, so keep that in mind when you ask questions. If there is something sensitive or personal, you may not want publicized. Those are um, items you might want to take offline with us. Please keep uh, yourselves muted and utilize the chat function to ask questions if you're joining us on the Teams app. And we will, um, just for clarity, we will provide a question and answer session after all of the presentations are complete. So again, welcome. And um, many of you have read my memo to the business community that was sent last Thursday. COVID-19 continues to disrupt our daily lives, our schools, and our businesses and we're expecting holiday gatherings will drive more positive case counts in the weeks ahead. So ACCD and our partners across state government wanted to offer tips and recommendations for businesses as we move into 2022. I wanna reiterate that these are not mandates or requirements, nor are they foreshadowing a lockdown. We want to talk about today best practices and ways to navigate the ongoing crisis to keep your business operating, your employees safe and healthy, and to reduce the strain on our hospitals. We also wanna share what the state of Vermont is doing as an employer to mitigate disruption of COVID uh, hang on a sec, uh, in our operations caused by COVID. We strongly encourage all businesses to consider adopting a similar policy regardless of their size and regardless of whether it's required. As an employer, you have a responsibility to mitigate known hazards in the workplace. COVID is a known hazard. Requiring employees to be vaccinated or to test for COVID is one proven way to reduce the risk of spreading COVID infection in your workplace. Secretary Clouser will share how the state implemented this approach. We hope you'll take away some ideas that could work with your business. We will share information about testing and vaccines, what to do when there is a positive in the workplace, and look ahead to where the state is heading with its testing and vaccine policy uh, and strategy. So with that, joining us today uh, are the following, Secretary of the Agency Admi Administration, Kristen Clauser, Director of Workers' Compensation and Safety Division at the Vermont Department of Labor, Stephen Monahan. Deputy Secretary of the Agency of Human Services, Jenny Samuelson, and Dr. Patsy Kelso, the state's epidemiologist for infectious disease at the Vermont Department of Health. We'll start by tossing it to Secretary Clauser to learn more about the state operations plan for mitigating COVID-19. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am just going to give some background on the state of Vermont's actions as an employer with respect to mitigating COVID-19 at the workplace. So what the state of Vermont chose to do is a vaccine policy. The state of Vermont employees are required to attest to being fully vaccinated against the COVID-19 virus or be subject to regular COVID-19 testing and masking requirements. We implemented this vaccine policy in two stages. The first began on September 1st, 2021. That was focused on all state of Vermont employees within the 24 seven residential facilities that we operate. Specifically, those were six correctional facilities, two residential psychiatric care facilities, and the Vermont Veterans Home. This impacted about 900 State of Vermont employees. In lieu of requiring proof of vaccination, we required employees to attest to being fully vaccinated, which was defined as your first and second shot or one shot if you were the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. These were at the 24 seven facilities. These were paper attestation forms. They were filled out on site 
and filed at the workplace. We made on-site testing available in the workplace for these 24-7 facilities, and we also required masking. Now, with respect to the 24-7 facilities, this implementation was fairly smooth, and that was predominantly the result of federal CMS regulations and other health and safety rec requirements that were in place, which required masking at all times and required what we call um, it required regular testing, not weekly testing, but kind of rolling testing. So the employees that worked at those facilities were used to wearing a mask at all times, regardless of vaccination status. And they were also used to be used to being subjected to testing. So that implementation went relatively smoothly. 15 days later, we required a the vaccine policy to apply to the general employee population. This is the vast majority of the state workers in Vermont, and it impacted about a little over 8,000 employees. Again, we did not require proof of vaccination. We required employees to sign an attestation form attesting that they were fully vaccinated. On September 15th, employees began the attestation process. They used an online form that was linked to our human resources information system. So the same system that employees use to go on and sign their time sheets, log in their time, fill out their forms with respect to reimbursements, et cetera. It was right in that same section. September 15th was a Wednesday, and we gave employees until September 20th to go into the system and attest to being vaccinated approximately five days. Starting that Monday, September 20th, unintested employees were required to wear a mask when at the work site. The following Monday, September 27th, 2021, we added the testing component. And so as of September 27th, the initial COVID-19 testing kit distribution collection sites were set up at 20 state employee work sites across the state to provide employees access to testing on or close to their work site. We required employees to test weekly at these sites. And again, these are this is, only applies to unattested employees. The test distribution and collection sites were administered by state staff and we used an existing state contract with a testing vendor to run the tests. Each day a week, the employee would pick up the test to their designated site. They would self-administer the test. They would register the test online and then drop the kit back off at the kit distribution center and state staff would mail the test to the lab Employees were then emailed the results of the test, and that happened between 24 to 48, sometimes a little longer than 48 hours. But the employees were emailed the results of the tests, and then the state, the employer, was notified whether the employee took the test. So the employer didn't get the results. What they got was a yes, the employee tested, or no, the employee did not test. On October 4th, we added additional testing kit distribution and collection sites. So the first 20 sites were at the major locations around the state that contained more than 50 state employees. To make it easier for employees to access testing, we added additional employee testing sites at more remote state locations and work sites. And so that was done on October 4th. 2021. And we made testing available not only to unattested employees, but to all employees, regardless of attestation status. So I thought it might be helpful to discuss some of the challenges and some of the successes of the vaccination policy that the state employed. 
We were significantly challenged by the size and geographic distribution of our employee population. The state of Vermont has over 9,000 employees and they're um, dispersed throughout the state. So locating the unattested employees' work sites, making sure we had the tests at that work site, getting, all, getting notice and messaging out to those employees was certainly a challenge. There was also a significant amount of staff time involved in implementation and compliance. This is mostly tied to our size and geographic distribution, but we, we had to um, really, there was a lot of work up front to locate the staff, figure out where we needed to develop the sites. And there is some, staff time involved on the tail end with respect to compliance, receiving notification of employees who did or did not test and then reaching out to those employees who did not test to follow up. There was additional training because the test distribution kits were staffed by state employees. We had to reach out and train those employees on how to give directions on how to administer the tests, and also where to send the tests, training on test distribution, and training to help the employee get into the system and actually fill out the required forms necessary to register their tests. We also had some challenges with um, temporary employees who were active in our system and therefore were counted as being unattested, but they were sporadically employed by the state of Vermont. So actually locating those employees and determining when and if they needed to test and attest was another challenge. That being said, we had a lot of successes, not the least of which was the 91.9% .9 of state employees who have attested to being fully vaccinated. Um, we have been publishing and promoting that number because anecdotally we found that employees have expressed an added feeling of safety when returning to the workplace in knowing not only that there's an incredibly high percentage of employees who are vaccinated, but also that employees who are unvaccinated are masking and testing. It provided an added sense of security to our state workers. We were also fortunate that we were able to adapt our existing systems and contracts with vendors so that employees could electronically attest and um, electronically enter their test information and that the state could get daily reporting and reports on progress because of their relationships and utilizing those pre-existing systems. We also, through the training and questions that were coming in from HR, have developed a um, pretty robust list of FAQs, and we've published that on the State of Vermont um, Department of Human Resources website. Many employees have continued to kind of access, both employees and supervisors have been able to access those FAQs, so they have a constant reminder of protocols and procedures. I think the title of this um, slide is pushed off, so I apologize for that, but this shows um, the weekly numbers of attestations. So you can see in the first week and then the first maybe two weeks, there was a substantial increase in attestations and then there was a, a fairly significant level off. The next slide shows new attestations, which are captured weekly. And I put this slide here to show that, you know, the first three weeks were um, very high in new attestations, obviously, because we just rolled out the program. But there is a pretty significant bump in new attestations um, several weeks out and then several weeks out from that. And while we didn't require employees to tell us why they were attesting, when they were attesting, but we did anecdotally hear from um, several employees that as a result of that vaccine policy, they did, and a return to the work site, that they did go out and get vaccinated. 
when they previously had not been. So I wanted to talk and touch on very briefly just some considerations if you are adopting this or something similar to this in your workplace. The first thing that you should determine is decide how you want to determine the vaccination status of your employees. The state of Vermont chose to do an attestation of vaccination status in lieu of requiring employees to show proof of vaccination. And so that's a key determination that you will have to make. Um, the next would be how you track and store the employee vaccination information. One of the reasons we went with an attestation is because we had the ability to roll out that attestation through the human Department of Human Resources um, webpage already. And so that system was set up and the employee could just go in and attest as opposed to setting up a new system to collect and carefully store the employee vaccination information. That information has to be kept in a secure location to protect the employees health information and so there's some additional complications with that proof of vaccination which led the state of Vermont to move towards an attestation in lieu of a vaccination but for much smaller organizations who don't have this the size and geographic distribution of the state of Vermont you may want to consider proof of vaccination a photocopy or something similar of a vaccination card it may be an easier way to collect vaccination status for a much smaller organization. The second consideration is to determine how the tests will be conducted and what tests will be accepted. You'll hear um, Secretary Samuelson talk later in the presentation about the different types of tests and um, the pros and cons of each, but determining which tests is another consideration for an employer when implementing something similar to this vaccination policy. Next is to determine who will be subject to the vaccination requirements or the in lieu of vaccination, the masking and testing requirements. This is particularly important if you have remote or home based employees who aren't coming to the work site. Um, the state of Vermont requires all employees, regardless of whether they are remote employees or employees coming to the work site to um, mask and test weekly if they are not attested. And we made that determination predominantly because our employees are occasionally called in to the work site or have to report to the work site for group meetings, et cetera. So despite being predominantly based, home-based, some of those employees may or do get called into the office on a semi-regular basis. The fourth determination is to decide how you'll communicate the timeline and expectations. Um, the state of Vermont, we, most of the employees with the state of Vermont have a union, so we were very um, coordinated with our labor partners and provided notice through the union, also provided written notice and um, rolled notice out through supervisors, et cetera. But that, how you're going to communicate and what timeline you want to give employers, employees before the requirement takes place is an important consideration. Finally, you should review OSHA rules, determine if they apply to you, and consult with your HR or employment law experts. You'll hear a little bit more about this in the next slides, but it's important that you are consulting employment law experts and working with your labor partners before implementing any sort of vaccination requirement. I appreciate everyone's time and I will hand it over to Director Monahan. Good afternoon. I'm Steve Monahan, uh, Director of Workers' Compensation and Safety Division for the Vermont Department of Labor for a few more days at least. Um, and COVID's on everybody's mind and perhaps rightly so. 
but uh, it's important that uh, employers not get distracted uh, when trying to figure out what to do with COVID or by the holidays generally that we're ex experiencing. Um, there are other safety and health standards that apply to the workplace. Um, there are, I'm not going to try to name them or go through them since you're a variety of different employers. Um, but I would remind you that um, those are issues. One of the things we're trying to achieve here is reduce the use of our hospital emergency rooms and ICUs. Um, and it would be uh, good for you and for your workers if they're not ending up at the ER because of a workplace or other injury. Um, we've also got distractions like uh, family members and children in the school system trying to mitigate COVID. Um, and I think it's good to send your employees reminders of the importance of basic COVID safety and health standards, as well as other basic safety and health standards, right down to uh, don't engage in distracted driving, don't speed on the highways, as well as make sure your machines are guarded, things of that nature. Um, so communicate with your employees. I would even suggest that you consider this at this time of year, having a short safety stand down, a toolbox talk with your workers to encourage safe acts, uh, talk about what hazards are out there and what they might be facing so that they can uh, get them addressed. Know that you're uh, focused on that as well. And they also focus on that just to keep them out of the hospital. Now, this isn't a regulatory requirement. I think it's just a common sense requirement um, that will assist you as an employer um, to go a long way to make sure that the basic safety standards are complied with, along with reminders on the importance of preventing COVID, the vaccination, the boosters, the masking, all of these will keep your business operating, your workers able to be employed, um, and visits to the hospital down. So if you have questions about specific standards, I would encourage you to contact our Project WorkSafe. This is a safety and health consultation program available to employers at no additional charge. Uh, you, the information you need for a free consultation or to answer safety and health questions is there on the posted on this document here and will be posted on the website. You can access it through uh, labor.vermont.gov as well. Um, you can also obtain information from our Compliance Assistance Unit at BOSHA, uh, either by phone or by contacting them by email. Again, that information uh, on this slide and can be found at our website. Finally, uh, something I'd like you to note coming up is um, BOSHA and um, WorkSafe have uh, gone out and engaged employers on some educational videos that I expect will be posted soon. Um, they worked with employers in our uh, Green Mountain Voluntary Protection Program to discuss things like creating a safety culture and providing uh, a safe and healthy workplace with some employment employee involvement. Um, all of these, I think, can assist you if you have any questions. So. All right, thank I'll you. Pass Sam. it off to Secretary, <laughs> uh, Deputy Secretary Jenny Samuelson. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be with you. Um, I'm going to cover two main topics today, um, and then my colleague, um, Dr. Kelso, will cover a third. Um, we're going to start off by talking about testing and the testing options that are available. We'll drop into vaccines um, and what vaccine tools are available to you, and then Dr. Kelso um, will delve into um, what to do if you test positive. 
As Secretary Clauser mentioned earlier, um, this, the testing is a critical tool for identifying cases, um, preventing spread, and keeping our work sites open. The state of Vermont, um, we're going to walk through kind of two, ty two types of tests today, um, rapid um, antigen tests and then um, the, the uh, PCR tests. The state of Vermont chose to use PCR-based testing um, for the program um, that we implemented. At that time, it had a lot to do with the availability of testing options, um, tests, uh, uh, other testing options were not as available as they may be now. Um, uh, PCR tests are also um, one of the most reliable testing options, allowing us to test our employees just once per week. Um, and uh, we had an existing contract for PCR testing. There are some disadvantages with PCR testing um, that I want to make sure that everyone is aware of. First, it is um, a moderate or me medium cost option higher than antigen tests, and it takes between 24 and 48 hours for the results to be returned around because they are an analyzed at a laboratory. The second type of test that we'll talk about today are antigen tests. Um, the antigen tests um, at the time that we implemented the program with the state were less available. Um, they uh, are a rapid test. Um, typically, uh, results are available within 15 to 20 minutes. Um, they are a much lower cost option tests. Um, and now, um, versus when we implemented the program of the state, they're becoming more readily available. Um, the, one of the disadvantages is they are slightly less reliable. Um, and um, based on that reliability, it's generally recommended that you do them in serial fashion, meaning that rather than once a week, you would implement an antigen testing protocol potentially um, twice a week um, to ensure the reliability of the test. As we go through today, though, I'm going to talk about kind of two options for employers. One is the testing and vaccines that are available through the state. Um, and the second is the mechanisms that you might um, that you might work through in order to purchase a test. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, so the state of Vermont offers across the state approximately 29 available public testing sites that are free and open um, to individuals who um, register at those uh, register for testing. Um, the availability of those test sites are um, posted on the Vermont Department of Health website. Um, you can find those uh, the testing closest to you uh, by first looking at the interactive map um, that shows where it's available. This interactive map is important because not only does it show the state sites, it also shows available um, pharmacy sites and other testing clinics that might be available through healthcare providers in your area. The Department of Health also on their website offers um, a, a registration um, platform um, and through that registration platform, it makes it very easy to identify what county um, you can filter by location, date and time. So it makes it easy to identify the actual availability of an appointment through one of the state testing centers. The best way to register um, for that testing appointment is actually to go online to that registration site Alternatively, employees are able to call um, the registration line, and this is the same number both for vaccines and for testing. It's 855-722-7878. You don't have to remember that. It will be available on the slides. It will be distributed afterwards. It's available on weekdays during business hours, and then it's also available on Saturday and Sunday from 10 until 3 p.m. The other way to register for a testing appointment is that we have many testing partners like our pharmacies across the state, Walgreens, Kinney's and others um, who have registrations and you can register for their appointments directly through their website and they're, av they're available on an ongoing basis. If you wanted to actually provide um, provide testing at your work site, probably the most available option is for you to purchase over-the-counter testing kits. Um, the most available and least expensive over-the-counter testing kits are, are antigen test kits. Um, they are available through many pharmacies across the state, Walgreens, CVS, um, Walmart, Hannaford's, um, as well as online. 
these test kits are often available in limited supply, particularly locally, potentially more available through an online vendor. Um, many of the kits, such as Buy Next Now and um, Quick View, actually come in two packs um, that are available to, to employers. Um, the reason for that is it's typically recommended to do one test and then a second test um, at least 24 hours later. Um, again, the antigen test kits are available at pharmacies for an employee who may be concerned about testing themselves um, and trying to cover the cost. If you're passing that the cost on to the employee, um, they are covered by most commercial insurance and by Medicaid. Um, and Medicaid doesn't provide any cost sharing um, for uh, the purchase of the kits. In order for it to be covered through an insurance provider, um, an individual would need to have a prescription. The prescription can be done not only by their healthcare provider, such as their physician, nurse practitioner, or others. It also can be provided by a licensed pharmacist um, at, the, at the actual pharmacy. Um, and some pharmacies may use a standing order um, that's already in place um, and, um, and so it becomes quite easy for individuals to get um, an over-the-counter test kit for purchase and then uh, to bring home through their health plan. Next slide. Um, we do ask, um, one of the things that's really important throughout the pandemic is the opportunity to know what testing is happening um, and uh, to know what those results are. Um, as we move to a more take-home option, um, we do ask it Vermonters to report um, their test results either, if, either through um, the pharmacy if it's done there directly to the state, um, simply by asking for those results to be reported, or um, through the Department of Health um, website um, where there is an actual self-reporting form. This is particularly important if an individual is positive. More important than, than testing, um, which has been a major component of our discussion, is actually vaccines. Vaccines are our first line of defense in preventing um, COVID-19 and particularly preventing um, hospitalizations from COVID-19. Um, we're encouraging that individuals get vaccinated and that they get their booster shot um, following their initial vaccine series. For those who received Moderna or Pfizer, we recommend that they get a booster shot um, six months after their initial series is completed and then two months um, after Johnson and Johnson's shot, shot is also crucial. Um, the boosters are really important in order to maintain um, immunity to the, to the virus. Um, vaccine clinics appointments are available statewide. Um, they're just like our testing centers, um, they are available um, at a, a significant number of sites across the state. Um, many of those sites that are now hosted um, through um, the Department of Health or others, as there have been more availability, are now opening up to walk-ins. And so we strongly encourage someone who's been on the fence and makes the decision to walk into a site um, and get their vaccine um, as soon as they've made that decision. Request there's also the opportunity for employers who decide, um, who are um, work who have employees who have yet to be vaccinated um, through their primary series or through a booster to request a vaccine um, clinic for their employees um, for their employees families or their um, their community um, and that I'll go through where how to do that in one moment. Um, okay. So. Registering for a vaccine appointment is very similar to registering for a testing appointment. There's an interactive map. Um, that interactive map will show um, both pharmacy sites and state testing sites. Um, it includes um, where there are availability of walk-in appointments and information um, about um, how to register um, for the different vaccine clinics that are available. For the state-run vaccine clinics um, that we host with uh, our key healthcare partners across the state, um, it's really easy to log in. You can filter by time, date, and town in the registration system and find the most convenient appointment um, for, uh, for the individual. Um, 
In addition to offering registration through the vaccine um, testing uh, vaccine um, site and testing site, you can also again call the call center. They're available on weekdays during business hours and then on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 3 um, that they can also answer a myriad of questions about where it's available. Many of our pharmacies across the state continue to also offer vaccines um, at the pharmacies, including many of the grocery store pharmacies like Hannaford, Shaw's, um, Costco and others. So we strongly encourage people to look locally um, and uh, when they're um, planning on getting uh, their vaccine. Again, for employers who are implementing policies, um, you can easily request a vaccine um, clinic um, at your uh, at your work site and um, for your employees, for their families or for your local community. Um, if you go to the Department of Health website or in the presentation, um, you can uh, do a direct link to the Department of Health website um, and uh, put in information about what you're looking for, um, and then we will uh, we will contact you back um, with the availability. For smaller businesses, we often ask them to pool if they are in the proximity of other testing of other vaccine um, locations to kind of pool together and offer it um, um, for multiple businesses at a time. Um, we have also seen very effective um, uh, employers offer um, incentives to their employees. Um, some of them um, could be having the next day off. We have many employees who uh, without um, without penalization and we've got many of employees who are concerned about um, getting a vaccine and, and losing a day of work the next day. Um, and then what's really critically important is to promote your clinics um, to your employees, their families and the local um, and the local uh, public. What will happen if you request is that a local EMS crew or the Department of Health um, will work to schedule um, a clinic. They will they will um, make sure that you have on site tables, chairs and other things that are necessary um, and they can offer a variety of different um, vaccines. At this point, we would likely offer Pfizer and Moderna, which would mean that we would come back a second time um, to do a second clinic uh, or uh, to come back later and do a booster six months later. Um, we do have an opportunity to also schedule pediatric vaccines. Clinics usually take between two and four hours um, and are open and accessible to the work site. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Kelso, um, to walk through what would happen if you actually had a, um, a COVID positive individual at your work site. Thank you. We created these simple flowcharts as tools for you to use. Um, if you think there's an exposure at your work site. So there's a separate tool or decision tree for fully vaccinated employees and one for not fully vaccinated. Um, I'm going to quickly run through them. First, the fully vaccinated individuals. If uh, first you need to identify whether someone has had close contact with a case, meaning they spent more than 15 minutes uh, within six feet of that person. Um, cumulatively. So if someone is a close contact and they are fully vaccinated, there's really nothing they need to do if they don't have any symptoms. Um, we recommend that they get tested five to seven days after that exposure, uh, but that is optional. If they have symptoms, however, that could be due to COVID-19, um, anyone who has symptoms, regardless of their exposure or their vaccination status, should get a test. If those test results are negative and they are fully vaccinated, even though they are a close contact, um, they can return to normal activities. There's no quarantine or other requirements. However, anyone with a positive test needs to be um, isolate from other people, not be at work uh, for a 10 day period from the onset of their symptoms or the date of their positive test. Um, if if we look on the right side of that fully vaccinated chart, if someone um, is not actually a close contact, for example, they were not at work the day the infectious person was there. Um, there's nothing they need to do unless they have symptoms, in which case they should get tested. With so much COVID-19 circulating in Vermont communities right now, um, it's it's important to remember anyone with symptoms should be getting a test just to make sure they know their status. 
So now we'll flip over to the not fully vaccinated chart, which is a little bit more complex. People who are identified as a close contact of a case and are not fully vaccinated need to be in quarantine. That's the uh, orange box there in the middle. So quarantine means stay home for at least seven days um, as if you get a negative test on day seven or later. Then if that test at day seven or later is negative, you can get out of quarantine and return to normal activities. Of course, if the test is positive, it means isolating. For close contacts who have symptoms, they should just get tested right away without waiting until a specific date like day seven. And again, for people who are not identified as a close contact, if they weren't there that day um, or were not within, within six feet for 15 minutes or more, if they're not vaccinated, um, there's nothing they need to do unless they have symptoms and then it's get a test and re respond accordingly. So our hope is that these charts are simple to use and easy to follow and, and help guide your decision making if you do have someone with COVID-19 at your work site. Great, thank you, Dr. Kelso. Um, I think um, if we could do a really quick overview on the sort of what's coming down the pike so that we allow for some question and answers, that would be really helpful. Uh, Jenny, I'm not sure if you could do it in maybe two or three minutes. Yep, I can do it Thank very you. quickly. I think what um, what you will see continue to see is um, on-site vaccine clinics across the state. That's our goal. Um, I think that where you will see the majority of the evolution in the coming months is in our testing protocols. Our current system is set up primarily for PCR. Um, over the next three to six months, you'll see that um, become variable with PCR and then rapid testing with LAMP and antigen tests um, available across the state. I think the key point here is if you're looking to do on-site testing at your location, um, in, in addition to purchasing your own antigen tests, if you want a vendor, um, we uh, have a couple of vendors that we've used successfully in Vermont, including Garnet Health, which is a Vermont-based company, and CIC Health. Great. Thank you so much. Um, with that, I want to open it up to questions. Um, we have some questions that have been asked in the chat. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Nate and Jess to facilitate through some of the questions. Some great questions in here. I'm sure others want to know the answers to them as well. So um, I don't know which one of you wants to, to take them, uh, kind of scan through and, and read some of them. Some of them have been answered real time, but others have not. Yeah, sure. I can go ahead. I'll just start with the um, with the oldest questions first. Um, so they might be a little bit out of order, um, but we have a question that says, what should the COVID testing protocol be for an employee who returns to work from a vacation involving out of state travel? I'm almost finished um, posting a response, but I'll say it quickly here. For okay. domestic travel, there is no testing requirement. However, we would recommend testing five to seven days after a possible exposure. So that could be, um, you know, for a quick trip, five to seven days after you return to Vermont, or if you were away for a week, um, it, it could be, you know, getting a test as soon as you get back to Vermont because your exposure might have been in the middle of that prior week. Um, for international travel, there are federal requirements, and I'll put a link to those requirements in the chat. Great, thank you, Dr. Kelso. Um, the next question we have is, why did the state decide on the attestation instead of proof of vaccination? Um, maybe Secretary Clauser can comment a little bit on that decision tree. Sure, so we already had through our existing online system an ability to have folks line, log in and sign an attestation. We also um, spoke with union reps ahead of time and worked together on creating that attestation. And for us, because of the sheer number of state employees, which was over 9,000, and the timeline with which we needed to collect attestations, which was five days, we decided that the um, online attestation 
was the way to go. It also didn't require the state to store the private secure um, information and to create a new platform in order to um, receive the proof of vaccination, you know, a photocopy of cards, et cetera, and figure out how to store those. So for us, it was um, it was easier and more efficient to require attestations. Great. And has the state quantified the cost of testing for the employee program? Or is there maybe a general, more general cost per employee that we can give an estimate on for businesses who are interested in? Kristen, do you want me to take that one? Yes. Yeah. So the cost um, for employee testing is really considerably variable by the type of test that is chosen. An antigen test can range from $5, um, $5 per test, upwards of $20 per test. Most PCR tests are $50 or more um, per each one of the tests. So it really, again, depends on the type of test that you, um, that you choose um, in terms of the overall cost. Great, thank you for that. That's super helpful. Um, did everyone who was unvaccinated have to test, including those who were working from home? I think this is a specific question about the state's rollout of the attestation and testing program. Yes, so everyone who did not attest to being fully vaccinated was um, was requ is required to mask when at the workplace and submit to weekly testing. There are a, a couple of um, exceptions to those requirements based on unique individual circumstances. But as I said in the presentation, because even if you are a home-based employee, there are times when you're called into the work site, we did require all employees, even home-based employees, to, to submit to weekly testing. In some instances, um, we have done at we have sent the test kits to the employee's home. So that's another accommodation we made for certain employees. Um, so they don't have to come to the work site to test and then return home. We sent the test kits to them. And is the attestation that the state used online or is there a form attestation that we'll be sharing with employers? So we we have both. We have a form attestation, a hard copy that was used for the 24-7 facilities. That same attestation was then um, posted online and we can provide a copy of what that attestation is for folks. I'm not sure if, if you are not on the the human, if you don't have a link to the human resources site, I'm not sure whether or not it's available or posted, but we can get a copy. I can also put my email in the chat so that if anyone's interested in receiving that, um, go ahead and email me and I can email you a copy. Um, from okay. And just to follow up on that, um, a, a little bit more information, the attestation that we used was a combination of um, speaking with other states and borrowing some of what they used, speaking to the union and um, accommodating some of their requests and trying to provide for federal regulations that were not necessarily in place when we started the attestation process, but we knew were coming online soon. So um, I give that as background as it may not be the perfect fit depending on what type of employer you are, but we can certainly make it available. Great, and it looks like this next question um, is in regard to the stay that was lifted on the federal order for weekly testing. Um, will the state be offering any resources to employers to help them accomplish those requirements? And I know that we didn't touch on the stay being lifted specifically, but. Jess, can you can you read that question one more time? Sure, yeah. So since the stay was lifted on the federal order, and Steve might know, um, Steve Monaghan might know a little bit more about this, um, for weekly testing of unvaccinated employees, will the state be able to assist employers to help accomplish the requirements like testing, like providing testing resources, et cetera? 
uh, I know that. I, I guess I don't know the answer to that. The state will be able to VOSHA will be able to provide information about what's required, but we do not have separate resources, uh, testing resources separate from what's already out there. OK, so it looks like we need to do a little more digging on exactly what the stay being lifted means. Um, but if oh, I mean what the state, what the stay being lifted means is that VOSHA will have to most likely it means VOSHA will have to um, begin its own adoption process of an emergency temporary standard that's at least as effective as the federal. Uh, I'm expecting that we'll get some contact from federal OSHA today, but I haven't got it yet. <laughs> the question may be around like with that temporary standard, like if that temporary standard goes in place, will there be additional federal dollars to support testing? And I think that's the that's what we don't know. Correct, Steve? Right. Uh, right. There's not been nothing said to VOSHA at any point in this process that additional federal dollars would be available to to employers to implement this. And is um, is the state opening any more testing sites um, or providing other testing options for employers? It looks like this question um, was already answered by Deputy Secretary Samuelson, but if you could just verbalize it, that would be great. Yeah, the state um, continues to have testing sites um, broadly, broadly um, across our geography. We have monitor that really closely um, to see whether we are exceeding the capacity of those sites. And if there is a need to augment capacity, um, we will do that at those public testing sites. Um, beyond that, um, we can get employers connected up with um, some private vendors who do um, provide and offer testing. Um, I listed a couple in the presentation. CIC Health um, is the one that the state currently uses and um, Garnet Health is one that's here in Vermont, but there are, I can't recommend one over the other um, and there are a variety of other testing vendors that are available. But again, the state um, will continue to monitor the availability of testing and increases necessary at the current state sites. Great, and just um, to clarify, we have, um, in case of any confusion, can we give clarity on whether any Vermont employers are subject to the OSHA 100, whether Vermont employers are subject to the OSHA OSHA 100 plus employee rule um, before Vermont adopts its own rules and two whether Vermont whether a Vermont rule will apply to employers with 100 plus employees and that includes does it include employees in Vermont um, but also nationally and internationally so the Vermont rule uh, isn't in place in effect it would be in place um, roughly 30 days after we're told by federal OSHA, it has to be in place, which I suppose in theory could be 30 days from today. Um, it would apply to any Vermont employer that has 100 or more employees, whether they're in this state or another state, and it would apply to an employer whose main office is in another state, but has employees in this state and has more than 100. Um, Thanks, so look, 100, it's, if you have 100 or more employees nationwide, then okay. the rule will apply to you if you have any, any of those employees working in Vermont. Great, and we actually do have a couple of questions in the same vein um, with um, uh, wondering if there are our, our employee compensation resources, if instances of quarantine um, because of exposure or being out of work because of exposures or positive um, tests, um, if there's compensation for those employees or any federal or state programs that may provide compensation for those days being missed. Well, of course, there um, the state has a uh, sick leave, family sick leave requirement, um, so paid sick leave. So um, if the requirements uh, that law are met or an employer is subject to that law, it must provide that. Um, 
there are circumstances where unemployment insurance may be an option, but they would have to discuss that with the unemployment insurance. Um, and workers' compensation insurance would only be available if the person actually contracted COVID, had a positive test, uh, and they had contracted it at work. Um, and then if they were out of work more than three days, workers' compensation might kick in. I'm not this aware of any other programs at this time. I'm not either, and this is something we could try to um, pull together. All of what Steve just said in maybe one place for people and share um, and get a little bit more, because I think I could be wrong on this, Steve, but I feel like the sick, the required sick leave, paid sick leave is around three days, which kind of lines up with what you just said about workers comp, but I'm sure folks would find that helpful if we could could put that in one place. So we'll take that offline and work on it and, and try to push that out to folks. Um, there, there's a question about if there are specific guidelines for individuals who've recovered from COVID. Thank you. Um, if they are a close contact, but they are not vaccinated, they would still be required to quarantine. The um, concern is about testing within three months of having a confirmed case of COVID. Um, testing can continue to be positive for up to three months. So if someone was um, a close contact of a case, unvaccinated, but had had COVID in the past three months and developed symptoms, they should speak with their healthcare provider about the appropriate test. Okay, so we have about one minute left. I want to make sure that we're at least touching. Um, it looks like there are there's more questions about whether or not unemployment insurance can be used. I think we can get some more definitive answers from that. We don't have anyone from the unemployment insurance division on right now. Um, um, but specifically, if an employee who is refusing to be vaccinated is terminated, will they qualify for unemployment? Um, that's a good question. I don't know, Steve, if you know the answer to that or if that we can put that in the more information needed bucket. Uh, yeah. Look, You've got to see. Like, my understanding is they're not. I think that is one that goes in more information bucket. Okay. I don't want to see the unemployment program. Um, there's a question and I'm not uh that's a good one. Since the state implemented the vaccination or test requirement, how did your state employee positive case rate compare to the general population of the state? Do we have that data? I think Secretary Clauser may know that. So we we don't we do have data with respect to um, positive tests that have come back as a result of the employee testing. Well, I don't have it on me, but we can certainly um, try to compile that. I don't believe we have a, a apples to apples comparison, um, but happy to look into that. Great, thank you. Um, so we are at time. It's 4:01. Um, do you? What do you? What's your pleasure, Secretary Curley? Do you want to keep going, or do you want? Um, I just I think there there are probably folks that are booked tight at four, so we probably need to wrap. But what we'll do is go through the rest of the questions that we didn't get to, and we'll create um, a little sheet, and we owe owe you a little bit more information as well. So we'll we'll distribute that to to folks. Um, if you're particularly interested, if you're uh, I don't I'm trying to think. Uh, Nate or Jess, recommendations for how they let us know if they want that follow up information. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an announcement with my email address. I think that's probably best case. So if you have a question that wasn't answered here, there's a more specific question you feel like needs to be answered, particularly like for your specific business. Um, feel free to email me that and I will farm it out so that we can get someone to answer it for you. Um, these slides, um, I think Secretary Clauser indicated, um, are on our on ACCD's website and. Um, the PDF on the website is downloadable and it, all of the links are live. 
Um, so if you go to accd.vermont.gov, um, the PowerPoint presentation that we just went through is there and all of the information we provided also is there, but with live links to all of the resources in, in case um, you know something wasn't addressed here. Or you need more information about something. Great. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, we hope that you found this this informative and um, certainly would welcome your feedback or if there's additional as as just just mentioned additional information or questions that you want answered. Um, I think you know I hope there's there's a few things that you heard loud and clear today. We certainly are encouraging um, individuals to get vaccinated. It it is much. Uh, it, it mitigates much, much disruption in everyone's lives. Um, there were a lot of questions about the folks that have to quarantine, you know, if they've been identified as a close contact. And certainly if they um, have COVID, there is isolation required. But if they're a close contact, they're fully vaccinated and they're not experiencing symptoms, um, they won't be required to be out of work and miss special events and occasions in their lives. So. Hopefully um, that will encourage people to get vaccinated. Um, that's my just personal plug here. And again, uh, thank you all for being with us. I We all appreciate your time and to our presenters today. I appreciate your time as well and helping the business community um, be successful as we navigate the, the holidays with, uh, with COVID still around and among us. So take care, be safe, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thanks, everyone.